بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا إلى يوم الدين أما بعد نفس سيشن نمبر 18 today today it's regarding the guardians of hellfire uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discusses them as being zabaniya in the Quran. There's quite a bit of mention of that. We'll look at that inshaAllah. So we'll look at the several different verses with regards to the guardians of hellfire. Firstly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Muddathir, verse 30, 31. وَمَا جَعَلْنَا أَصْحَابَ النَّارِ إِلَّا مَلَائِكَةً وَمَا جَعَلْنَا عِدَّتَهُمْ إِلَّا فِتْنَةً لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا So there'll be tis'ata ashar, which means there'll be 19. Interestingly, the word 19 is used here, number 19 is used here. There'll be 19 upon it. And we've not made the guardians of the hellfire except angels. It's angels who've done so, and we'll learn about the description soon. And their number... We've not made their number except as a challenge for those who disbelieve. All of this will be discussed, inshallah. So Adam ibn Abi Iyas, he has a transmission from a person of the Banu Tamim who said that once we were with Abu Awam and he recited this verse, alayha tis'ata ashar, that there'll be 19 upon there. So the person, they asked, what do you mean by 19? 19 what? 19 angels? Uh, 19 angels, he says, rather, it's actually going to be 19,000 of them. So then they asked that, where did you come up with that number from? The Quran says 19. So where do you get 19,000? It says, because later, just after it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that this number is confusing. It's kept as a temptation for those who disbelieve. Not a temptation, as a challenge. So Abu Awam said to him, yes, you've told the truth. And every one of these angels will have a hammer. A hammer that you break rocks with. Hammers that are used to crack open rocks with. That's what they'll have. And they will strike the people with that. Thereafter that, there's another verse in Surah Al-Muddathir, verse 31, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا يَعْلَمُ جُنُودَ رَبِّكَ إِلَّا هُ Nobody but he knows his army. The army of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the army of your Lord is not known except by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And part of that, i.e. in terms of their number and what they look like and so on, in terms of hellfire. So this is all a description of that. Likewise, there's a, another narration from Ikrimah who says that when the first person who gets to hellfire, he's going to find on the first door, he's going to find 400,000 guardians. Uh, I don't know how he's going to know that number. That's a huge number to count. Right? Dark faces and their teeth and everything, it, it's uh, quite a frightening uh, spectacle. And now you understand the description of these guardians. قَدْ نَزَعَ اللَّهُ الرَّحْمَةَ مِنْ قُلُوبِهِمْ Allah's extracted, eradicated, removed every, any bit of rahmah from their hearts. They, they, they can't show any mercy. Like these are, they cannot show any mercy. He says, لَيْسَ فِي قَلْبِ وَاحِدِ مِنْهُ مِثْقَالُ ذَرَّةٍ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ not an atom's amount of rahmah is left and mercy is left in their hearts. And then it describes how wide they are, how big they are, that between their two shoulder blades is like the flight of a bird for two months. La ilaha illallah. And then he carries on and he describes them in that way. Now, after looking at the several narrations, I'm not going to go through all of them, it indicates that every one of the doors of hellfire has these main 19 guardians. They are actually just the heads of the whole 
armies of guardians beneath them. So when Allah says that there's going to be 19, that just means that they are the chiefs. They're the ones who are controlling all the, all the others. So there are probably 19 groups or 19 armies of these. Because in this one it says that under each one of these is going to be 400,000 under each of the 19 main guardians. So then when Allah mentions in the verse that we've kept their number as a fitna for the disbelievers, what does that come from? Well, that comes from this that you learn. There were some several incidents when this verse was revealed that there's going to be 19 guardians on hellfire. There was several reactions to that from the disbelievers at the time because they thought that 19, oh, we'll deal with them. You've got so many people, you'll deal with 19. That's not a problem. So, for example, Imam As-Suddi, he relates that there was a man of the Quraysh. His name was Abul Ushdain or Ashdain. Apparently, he was a very strong guy, big pehelwan kind of guy, right? So, when this verse was revealed, he was a disbeliever. So, he said, Ya Ma'ashar Quraysh, O Quraysh, this 19 angels, these 19 guardians should not frighten you at all. I'll take care of ten of those angels with my right shoulder, like I'll just basically like a rugby player or something like that, just, just get through them. And with my left shoulder, I'll take care of the other nine. And then you'll be able to go into Jannat. I don't, I, don't, I don't think he believes in any of this, but he was just saying that based on the fact that the Prophet had mentioned so. So whether he believes in paradise or hellfire, that's beyond the point. He's just taking what the Prophet ﷺ is saying and he's making a mockery of this. That's why Allah then, it says Allah followed it up with the other verse, which is that this number regarding the guardians of hellfire, we've just kept that as a challenge, as an uh, as a enigma for you people, as a fitna for those who disbelieve. Right? You think it's just 19, you'll take care of them? Well, you'll find out what it is. Qatada then says that even Abu Jahl, it's been mentioned to us that Abu Jahl, at the time of the revelation of this verse, he says, Oh Quraysh, can't ten of you, um, can't each ten of you just take one of them? And you know, you have 190, 200 people, just ten each of you, and you can take on one of those khazanatun nar, whereas you guys are strong, wa antum duhum, like you're very strong people. Whereas this, uh, you know, you'll be able to take care of this because this uh, man of yours, the, he's talking about the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He reckons they're only going to be nineteen, so ten to one person. You've got enough people to deal with it. On another occasion, there's another narration from Shabi from Bara regarding this verse that there was a group of the Yahud who asked a one of the Sahaba companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam about the guardians of hellfire. Now, remember, they had some knowledge of this because they've had a scripture. So they said, hey, we want to find out how many guardians of hellfire are there. So they asked one of the companions. He says, Allah and his messenger know best. He didn't know, right? Because nobody had this information first. So a person came and he told the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about this. And then Allah revealed, عَلَيْهَا تِسْعَةَ عَشَرْ 19 is the number. So then he told his companions. And then he said, okay, now call the Yahud. So they came and they asked the same question again. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went like this. And then like that. Uh, sorry, you, uh, one, one, one thumb. So that's 19. So he went 10 and then 19. So that's uh, a corroboration from there. Right. The next part is uh, there's another verse. I think it's Surah Al Tahrim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, عَلَيْهَا مَلَائِكَةٌ غِلَاغٌ شِدَادٌ لَا يَعْصُونَ اللَّهَ مَا أَمَرَهُمْ وَيَفْعَلُونَ مَا يُؤْمَرُونَ upon, upon it are angels who are very severe, who are very harsh. They do not disobey Allah in what He has commanded them, and they do exactly what that they have been ordered. Now the, the, this is, who are these referring to? So again, you've got a number of narrations that tell you how big they are. I'm not going to go through all of them, but it goes on to describe these angels of hellfire. That's the verse that refer refers to them. The next verse is in Surah Al-Zukhruf, verse 77. In that one, uh, the guardian of hellfire, the main one, his name is mentioned. 
So it actually says, ya Malik Rabbuk. So they will call and they will, and the, the, yes, they will make a plea, Ya Malik, O oh guardian of hellfire. His name is Malik, right? Malik means the owner. So show he owns the place, that he is in charge, absolutely. So he is essentially the leader. He is the head of Jahannam. He is the head director of Jahannam. He takes care of everything. There's numerous angels under him. Now the Prophet ﷺ got to see him during his ascension night. He got to see him then. And uh, Malik actually made salam to him. Assalamu alaikum. Imam Muslim has transmitted this hadith from Anas radiallahu anhu. The Prophet ﷺ then saw, has seen him again in his dream. But that time he was in a really, I'm not sure about the first time, but definitely what it mentions when he saw him in his dream, he was in a extremely frightening state. His, the, the way he looked was very, very, very frightening. He says, and the Prophet described him as one of the worst kind of ugliest things and frightening you, you, would, you would see, you know. La ilaha illallah. Then we have another verse which is in Surah Al-Alaq. Verse 17, 18. So he should call on to the whoever it is. We will call on the Zabaniya. So essentially the question is, who is this Zabaniya that the Quran is referring to? Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu says Zabaniya as angels. Ata says these are not normal angels. These are the severe, very harsh, very powerful angels. Muqatil said, yeah, these are the ones from Jahannam. These are the guardians of Jahannam. And Qatada says that generally the word Zabani, the Arabs use the word, it means police, security force. But when it refers to the hereafter, it means angels because that's who's going to be the security force there. How tall would they be? Were they to stand on the earth, their heads would be in the heavens. That's what Ibn Abi Hatim has transmitted. So then you've got in Surah Al-Haqq, verse 30, where Allah says, خُذُوهُ فَغُلُّوهُ now when Allah gives that command, خُذُوهُ فَغُلُّ Like capture him, take him and shackle him all up, then 70,000 angels will rush to do that. Will, will rush to do that. And Allah protect us. And Allah protect us. Now the next chapter, the next section is regarding the Day of Judgment. Now this probably, I'm assuming, would be the first spectacle of Jahannam that people will see. On the day of judgment, resurrection, when everybody is just gathered together, they've come from this world, from this coma, this sleep, uh, whatever it is, and then they've been brought back to life and they're just completely bewildered. And part of that bewilderment will, will, will be what's going on on that day, just complete hesitation, wonderment, uh, indecisiveness, uh, heat, and nakedness and everything else that's going on that day. And then, subhanAllah, there's a number of verses which describe the coming of hellfire. So for example, in Surah Al-Fajr, verse 21-24, Allah says, Kalla idha dukkatil ardu dakkan dakka wa jaa rabbuka wal malaku saffan saffa wa jiea yawma idhim bi jahannam yawma idhim yatadhakkaru al-insan wa anna lahu al-dhikra yaqulu ya laytani qaddamtu li hayati So he's talking about when the earth will be finished and then your Lord and the angels will come and they'll be all formed in rows. And then on that day, Jahannam will be brought along. That's when the human being, he will be reflecting and thinking. But what's the point of that reflection and that thought and all of that reminder on that day? He will then say, I wish I'd sent for this life. I, I wish I'd done something. I wish I'd done something. It's going to be the moment of reflection, but that's why reflection needs to happen today. Subhanallah, anybody for anything of this world, if a person pursues something of the world, there's training. You have to read the manual. Otherwise, people make big blunders. When you join a new company, there's a certain process. They give you training. I get a call today of somebody who's divorced their wife three times. The excuse that they're trying to push through is he doesn't know much about Islam. I said, is he Muslim? Yes, he is a Muslim. 
but he doesn't know, he didn't know the rulings of this. And he gave three divorces. I said, well, he knew some ruling by giving three divorces, the magic number for some reason, right? Th th this is not an example. People, uh, th this is the second case I've dealt with in the last two days. People should learn. People should learn. You go to, uh, to do anything new, you need to learn the ropes. You need to know what's going on. You need to know the hazards. You need to know how to exit. You need to know how to do things. So you learn about that for everything in the world. You learn how to switch off your laptop. Right? You know, you learn how to switch off a laptop because you can use it. You switch it off. You learn how to lock a door because there's a hazard if you don't lock your door. You learn to lock your car. You don't just drive a car and you don't know how to lock it. Right? People call them crazy if you don't like, hey, you know, I bought this new car, I don't know how to lock it. You know, it's a possibility, but you know what I'm saying. And the dean is like the last thing on your list that you have to learn about. And then you mess up like this. Right? What's going to happen in hellfire? Subhanallah. Then in Surah Al-Nazi'at, verse 34 36 to 36, Allah says, فَإِذَا جَاءَتِ الطَّامَّةُ الْكُبَرَى يَوْمَ يَتَذَكَّرُ الْإِنسَانُ مَا سَعَى وَبُرِّزَتِ الْجَحِيمُ لِمَنْ يَرَى Same kind of idea that when that day occurs and the human being will be thinking about what he's done and so on and so forth and Jahannam will be brought out in all of its glory and in all of its might and its ugliness and its punishment for everybody that sees. La ilaha illallah. Thereafter in Surah Al-Takathur verse 5 to 7 Allah says, Kalla law ta'lamuna ilma al-yaqeen Latarawunna al-jaheem Thumma latarawunnaha ayna al-yaqeen for so many weeks, we've been discussing hellfire. But then Allah says in these verses, you're going to learn about it. With the knowledge of conviction. Right now we believe in it because we believe in the Qur'an. But when you actually see it there in front, you're certainly going to see it. And then it's going to become Ainul yaqeen the eye of certainty can be no doubt about it. May Allah protect us on that day. So, there's a narration from Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Jahannam will be brought on that day. And the way it's going to be brought is like it's this huge structure we've been discussing how big it is. Now, it's mind-boggling just to even think about this. But it's going to be pulled by 70,000 halters, 70,000 ropes, 70,000... Um, ropes that are uh, essentially controlling it to bring it there, to move it into the place of Jahannam somehow. Now, the interesting thing is that each one of those holters that you, they're going to be pulling it with, each one of them is being pulled by 70,000 angels. So it's essentially 70,000 times 70,000. Uh, it's some 40, I don't know, some, some crazy billion number. I worked it out sometime, I didn't have the time to do it today. There's another narration from the Prophet ﷺ, it says that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finally gathers everybody on the day of judgment, day of resurrection, the hellfire is going to come along, right? And it's just going to be raring to go, that's the thing. أَقْبَلَتِ النَّارِ يَرْكَبُ بَعْضُهَا بَعْضًا It's just, it's been waiting, it's been waiting for thousands of years since Allah created it, it's been waiting. However, its guardians it's almost like hellfire has a life of its own. It's a smart hellfire in the sense of modern terms, right? So it's calling for this, you know, hell mim mazid, even later it's going to call. So the, the hellfire, the, the guardians of the hellfire, they're in charge of restraining it. They're in charge of uh, suppressing it, containing it, you know, keeping it uh, how it should be. However, the hellfire is saying, وَعِزَّتِ رَبِّي لَتُخِلَّنَّ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَ أَزْوَاجِي says, by the might of my Lord, you're going, to, uh, you're going to open the path between me and my inhabitants, those that are supposed to come to me. Use the word my azwaj, my pairs, my, my spouse, almost. Yeah, that same word is used for spouse as well. But here it means essentially those that are destined for me, otherwise I, I would just you know, terrorize everybody. So then they ask, who, who are these of yours? Who are your inhabitants? He says that every mutakabbirin jabbar, 
Now this is something for us to think about. Every arrogant ty tyrant. So he's got arrogance and he's also a tyrant on top. So his arrogance is not just he thinks he's big, but he applies it to others and terrorizes everybody. Now this could happen in families. There's one terrorist in every family in that sense. who's terrorizing everybody with their arrogance. Right? It could be at state level. It could be at community level. It could be in a workplace. It could be anywhere. Anybody who's a mutakabbir in Jabbar, is somebody who thinks he's great in everybody else and humiliates everybody else for no reason and just terrorizes everybody and is tyrannical to everybody. May Allah protect us from being of that. And there's numerous narrations that discuss the people who Hellfire is really going out for. Like it singles these people out. There's generally three or four people mentioned. In fact, there's another narration from the Prophet There's several of them actually. It says that, يَخْرُجُ عُنُكُمْ مِنَ النَّارِ A neck essentially will emerge from the hellfire. This is almost like a periscope almost. You know, if you, if you want to assume it like that. It, it'll, it'll come out and it will speak and it will say, Today I have been, today I've been consigned three types of people. Like I need to deal with three types of people that have been consigned to me. One is كُلُّ جَبَّارٍ anid. Every stubborn, arrogant individual that we d discuss. Number two, anybody who has, who has taken another Lord with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that, that's obvious. And the third one is that whoever's killed anybody without a... When قَتَلَ نَفْسًا بِغَيْرِ نَفْسٍ Whoever's ki unjustly killed another person. So these people who are in gangs, they kill people they don't even know. They're just given an instruction to kill somebody. So that you have to do it to prove your worth or whatever the case is, uh, assassins, uh, violent people, uh, people who just have killed others for no reason. Numerous narrations like that. Another one uh, in another narration is mentioned, Kul Musawirin, those who, uh, those who uh, make pictures, right, who either sculpt statues or who draw pictures, according to the various different opinions. May Allah not make us of these people. Well, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will finally allow Jahannam, uh, will command Jahannam. So, as I said, Jahannam will let out, uh, will say, وَمْتَازُ الْيَوْمَ أَيُّهَا الْمُجْرِمُونَ Oh, guilty ones, you be distinct today. Like, we know who you are. You be distinct. There's no way to escape on that day. And then it came on Thursday Yawmi and Mujimun and it carries on the whole Afalam Takunu Ta'akhirun. Did you not used to understand? La ilaha illallah. There's Abu Hurairah on whose narration that Jahannam will be brought. And again, it's going to be pulled with 70,000 halters, 70,000 angels on each one of those 70,000 angels. And uh, it will be just rearing to go. It'll be made. To, uh, it'll be placed, uh, stopped next to, on the right hand side of the arsh of the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will, is eventually going to inspire it to say that you are not the punishment, like you're not in punishment, but you are the punishment for everybody that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to punish. I, Allah will say that I've created you for the punishment. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell it that it can begin. So it will start its roaring. فَتَزْفَرُ زَفْرَةً لَا تَبْقِي دَمْعَةٌ فِي عَيْنٍ إِلَّا جَرَتْ Not a tear is left in anybody's eye except they will start to flow. So when it does that, like when people are there who are listening, uh, who are seeing this spectacle, they're going to start. Then it's going to make another sound again. And this time, every, even the closest angel and any of the prophets as well, they will swoon at this time. That's going to be such a terrifying sound and um, what they see, except your prophet. Only your prophet somehow is going to be given this amazing calmness and is going to be collected on that day. Everybody else is just in another side. That day, after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's only Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who is going to be in control, who is going to have some kind of assurance, who is going to have some kind of confidence. He's going to be the savior on that day. 
Like he's going to be the one who's going to start the intercession and all the rest of it. You know, all the hisab and everything. May Allah allow us to be in his company. May Allah allow us to be lovers of him. And may he welcome us on that day of judgment to his hawd and kawthar and so on. Nabi Rahma, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's going to say, Ya Rabbi, ummati, ummati. You know, oh my Lord, my ummah, my ummah. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Okay, we move on to the next section, which is, now it looks like all the description of hellfire has been done in terms of what's inside and what it looks like and everything like that. Now it's, it has started from the Day of Judgment and is moving on. So now we've discussed, we've already discussed the guardians of hellfire. That was the only thing I think le- left of the discussion, although we'd read so many hadith about them already. Now it's talking about on Jahannam, it's going to start shrieking. And then it mentions that on top of Jahannam now, once the Jahannam has been brought in, everybody's very, very concerned because they've wept and everything has happened, heard the roaring of hellfire. ثُمَّ يُدْرَبُ الْجِسْرُ عَلَى جَهَنَّمْ A causeway will be erected on top of Jahannam. So a bridge some kind of pathway, a way to cross. Because J- Jannat is on the other side. So the only way to get there is over the top of Jahannam. That's the interesting part. You have to go on top of Jahannam, past it to get to paradise. That's the test here. So an assault course, right? Jahannam, if you survive, you'll get to paradise. If you don't survive, it's hellfire, right? And so that's why it says, what the shafa'a that's when intercession will now be lawful for people to make starting with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They will start saying, Allahumma sallim sallim, ya oh Allah, oh Allah, safety, safety, safety. Qila ya Rasulullah, wa mal jisr. Somebody asks, what is this causeway? What is it going to look like? What kind of a pathway is it? He said, it is extremely slippery. Dahdun mazillah, extremely slippery, like you you can't, it's not something you can just casually walk over. Fiha khatatif wa kalalib wa hasak. And not just that it's slippery, on the side, I mean, what an assault course. And there's no safety here. You're not hung by anything. You know, you fall, you fall in that case. There's no safety harnesses or anything like that. And there are hooks, anchors, and thorns on the side. So you have to avoid them as well. And then it's slippery on top. They're called sa'dan. They generally happen in Najd. He said that they're like that, the thorns that are like that there. So anyway, a believer is, mashallah, going to be able to pass through like the blink of an eye. It's, it's you know, essentially, when the way they describe it, it's something that you cannot pass over. It's impossible. The only way you can pass over is you need something to take you across. You know, some kind of propellant to take you across. There's no other way you can get across this. And you can only buy these propellants. You can only earn them. Right? You can only earn them in this world. So the only way to get across them, I mean, it's physically impossible to get across, the, across them just like that. So it's the effort we do in this world that essentially buys us a ticket to get across. It depends on how much effort. So those who've done very good effort, the blink of an eye, they'll be over, like done. Nothing touched them at all. Wakal bark. Then some like lightning, I guess that takes a f- some more seconds than the blink of an eye, right? That's the second group. Then karri, then like the wind. Then kattay, tayr, uh, like a bird. Wa ka al khayl wa rikab. Then like the best of uh, animals that can run across. So th- it's whatever we've been able to earn in this world. Unfortunately, we can't check. We can just hope that we've done some something and hopefully we've got one of these tickets, right? Fanajin Musallam, there's going to be those who uh, have been taken to safety and they're secure. They're safe and sound. Wa makhdushun mursal, then there's going to be those who will get past eventually but they are bruised. Not just bruised, they are wounded. Makhdush, with all of these thorns and everything that will uh, overcome them. But then there's the last group, wa mukardas. No, makardasun ala wajhihi fil nar. There's going to be those who will just fall off. So there's no safety harness. So if you fall, you fall into the hellfire beneath. This is what Imam Muslim has transmitted. 
And Imam Bukhari, rahmatullahi, he's in his version, he's got this other part. He says, Hatta the last of the good people who are supposed to get across, they'll finally just make it across somehow on their knees or dragging themselves or whatever the case is. Allah knows best. They, they're going to have just something, just enough to get them across, just enough energy to get them across. That's why in a hadith of Sahih Muslim, I told you that it's, if you hear the description of it, you're like, how do you even get across that? It's supposed to be adakku min ash-sha'r, thinner than a hair. How do you get across that? Thinner than a hair. If it's a large rope, maybe you can balance, but thinner than a hair, it'll just cut through or something like that. And it's sharper than a sword. So as you said, it's not something you can actually get across. You'd need some kind of help about it. Now we've got other narrations that give us a better understanding of how that's going to happen. So there's one in which it says, "Yamur al-mu'minuna ala sirati binurihim." The believers they will pass over it with their light. However, then they're going to be of those different categories. Some, like the blink of an eye, they'll just get across, no sweat, as they say. Others, there'll be sweat on the way. You know, it's going to be that. Now, there's another hadith, Bukhari and Muslim have transmitted Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned. He says, um, when this causeway will be placed, he says, فَأَكُونُ أَنَا وَأُمَّتِي أَوَّلُ مَنْ يُجِيزُ my, Myself and my ummah will be the first to traverse this and go to the other side. وَلَا يَتَكَلَّمُ فِي ذَلِكَ الْيَوْمِ إِلَّا الرُّسُلِ Nobody. It's going to be such a agonizing time, terrifying time. Nobody can speak except the messengers. Nobody will have the guts to speak. However, the messengers, دَعْوَةُ الرُّسُلِ يَوْمَيْذِنَ اللَّهُ مَسَلِّمْ سَلِّمْ What the other messengers are going to be saying is, Oh Allah, safety, safety, safety. Because Jahannam has all of these, you know, there's all of this stuff stuck around there, the thorns and the hooks and everything like that. And then Prophet ﷺ even said they're going to be like the thorns of Sa'dan. Have you ever seen the Sa'dan? He said, they said, yes, Ya Rasulullah. He said, that's what they're going to be, except that these are going to be massive. Not the ones that you've seen around, they're bad enough, but the way, these are going to be really, really big. Nobody knows the, their size except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they are going to be smart hooks. They're going to grab people according to their sins. Everything is, everything is designed. Nothing is accidental down there. So even these hooks, they're going to grab people according to the various different deeds that they used to do, and they know exactly what to do to these people. So some people... They're going to be destroyed by their deeds and others will pass by, will just about make it and so on. So that's another version we have. Now a third version, a third narration we have that describes this <coughs> is that they will eventually come to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and on that day when everybody's just gathered, nobody, nothing's happening. So then the Prophet sallallahu will get up, he'll be given permission and that day Two things will be very, very valuable. Two things will be very, very valuable. Number one is amana, trustworthiness. Trustworthiness will be very, very valuable on that day. Meaning, if it, a person had been trustworthy in this world. And number two will be rahim, will be your kinship. They, trustworthiness and kinship will stand at the two sides of the sirat, right and left, of this causeway, right and left. And they're going to have a certain benefit if you've been, uh, if a person has uh, done well with these things. And then it mentions the same thing that the first person will just go like lightning and so on. So the Sahabi, he asked, my father and mother be sacrificed for you. What do you mean that the person is going to pass by like lightning. What does that mean? So the Prophet ﷺ said, Have you not seen when lightning strikes, where it's almost like the lightning shoots down and then it returns and it's as fast as the blinking of an eye? It's like lightning is very fast. You can just about catch a picture if you're lucky. You can just about catch a vision of it. 
Although it's gone. It's a few, it's like a second or something, or two seconds or something like that. And then in this one it mentions like the wind, then like, the, like a bird flying. Now, this is the new part in here. It says, and your Prophet ﷺ will be standing at the bridge. Subhanallah. And he'll be saying, meaning your Prophet, whoever your Prophet is, will be standing there and be saying, Rabbi Sallim Sallim. Right? You know, such that when people don't have enough actions to take away, they're going, the Prophets are going to try to help in that sense. Then in this one it says that on the two sides there's going to be these hooks and other contraptions that are commanded to, it means that when this guy comes, you need to grab him. You need to do this much to him. It's like they, they know, it's been programmed already. There's a lot of narrations on this one. I'm just trying to mention uh, the few that you get a, a, an idea. Imam Abu Dawood has a narration from Aisha radiallahu anha. Once she spoke about hellfire or thought about hellfire and began to cry. So the Prophet wasallam said to her, Ma laki ya Aisha. What's wrong with you, Aisha? She said, I remembered hellfire and I started to cry. And then she asked the Prophet wasallam, Will you remember your people like your family and others on the Day of Judgment? So the Prophet wasallam said, there's going to be three occasions in all of this after hellfire time where nobody will remember anybody else. No father will remember their child and so on. No mother will remember their, 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 their children or anybody else. One is عند mizan Until you find out what your deeds are, the, the scale. At that time, everybody's worried about their own. Next one is, you know when you're about to get your book of deeds, do you get it in your right hand, left hand, behind your back, what it's going to be? Ha umukra'u kitabiya. Until they know. And the third time is on the sirat. It's like, do I get a cross or not? Now he's obviously, the Prophet is there for helping everybody else. Cause, but everybody else, nobody thinks of anybody else on that day. There's a lot of other narrations and inshallah we'll continue this next time. Jazakallah khairan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May Allah forgive us. May Allah grant us safety and security on that day. May Allah write us of those that will enter fast. There must be a reason, as I said, that we'll be covering this. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not let this go to waste. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow this to make us of those who will have safety and many others on the Day of Judgment. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Jazakallah khair for listening. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. And if you're finding this useful, you know, um, as they say, do that like button and subscribe button and forward it on to others. Jazakallah khair and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.